Yeah. Okay, uh, Terry, while you're here, do you have anything you want to bring up, you say? Mark. Yeah, um, sure, why not? <laughs> why not? It wouldn't be a council meeting without Terry. Oh, come on. And your name, Terry Lee, right? <clears throat> For the Channel 4? Terry Lee, Channel 4. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, just wanted to check um, back. I uh, wanted to report that the um, the Nickel Plate Trail actually received the second grant from the Community Foundation for moving the depot. Uh, and uh, at the last City Council meeting, we talked about the there was had been a previous resolution to accept the depot into the city's inventory, uh, and it was voted on to accept it into the inventory at the new location. But I wasn't sure if the resolution on that had been finalized um, I see resolution on the agenda by that as a question mark I wasn't sure if you two had coordinated on that uh, that was where I I've had the question mark because I okay. don't have anything now I we can if we use the same one that we did last year it would include the in kind for the water and sewage hookups and that was where I I, I wasn't sure what direction the council wanted to go with that because well, the water and sewer goes between the um, water and sewer board that wouldn't well, come to the council. No, but it has to be included. It, it was included in the last resolution. Right, but that, we'd have to take that. That would be an in kind of if, if, if the water agreed. boards would want to do that. We don't know. We don't know what that all entails. At this yeah, point. That, so that's, that, that sounds familiar now. So, yeah, I think we just probably need to work on the existing resolution to make sure it fits everybody's, right. you know, everybody's understanding. On the same page. Of, yeah, yeah. So, okay. Um, I just want to check on that um, and report that we did receive the grant. Um, also, we're pursuing, uh, Redevelopment Commission is pursuing uh, an okra planning and then a downtown revitalization grant as soon as we can. Um, we um, need a resolution that was just presented to us today. There's a couple of things actually. Fair housing, we have to be in compliance with the Fair Housing Act, um, drug, drug Free Workplace, Federal Drug Free Workplace Act. I think Andy reported that we maybe have that in our ordinances already. And then the third thing we need is a resolution that basically says you guys know we're pursuing the grant through okra we have that resolution I finalized yeah i wasn't sure if you wanted to present it tonight if you do i can get it um well I, we have to have a public hearing for that also which we want to be on your agenda for december 23rd for the public hearing for that so i think if we have the resolution to present at that time with the public hearing that's pretty basic. It, it says that we're paying forty-five hundred dollars in cash from the from the redevelopment commission funds, so not from the city general funds or anything. So, just kind of, I just want to report that we'll be here for a public hearing the twenty-third of December for downtown revitalization planning. It's going to put a, that's, there will be a lot of emphasis on um, housing and like infrastructure pieces, like we just talked about facade program and housing and that's that's what our planning there is going to go for um, that lead us leads us into a, an actual CDBG grant community development block grant and that's why we need the fair housing and the drug free workplace deal um, and want to report that uh, the redevelopment commission meets uh, for 12 excuse me um, 12 12 is that right yeah, okay, it's number four on my list. That's where the four comes from. So December 12th at 1130 at the Fedco offices, if any of you guys want to attend, I think we'll probably have an executive session from 1130 to 12 and then meet an open session from 12 until uh, probably 130. If you guys want to kind of come and see what other things the Redevelopment Commission is focusing their energy on, that'll be at the, uh, at the Fedco office. Um, and then we also had a resignation of a... Uh, of a member um, that was appointed by the mayor, uh, James Guthrie resigned, and uh, I just I, I think we've come up with a, a new or a replacement for that member. So, Mark, I don't know if you talked to the council about that or well, wanted to tonight yet. or. Did Kinder talk to you yet? Okay. <laughs> okay, good. Um, so, Kendrick Kendrick Densky is the person I wanted yeah. to uh, appoint. But I don't know if she declared that through her employment or not. She did. Okay. Boss. <laughs> that fine. And yes. Okay. Kendrick Jadinsky will be the appointment. And she's on the park board as well. And I, I discussed it with Andy to make sure that <coughs> we're crossing bridges between two different boards. And Andy 
Perkins, our attorney, said there was no problem there that we found. Right, Andy? I did not find any prohibition against that. No. Okay. So I think that'll be a good fit to I think so first too. the park department with the redevelopment commission because there's a lot of mm -hmm. interaction there. So and it's a good choice. And she plans to attend our meeting on the 12th, so I didn't know if you needed to do any thing official for that or not. So that's why I wanted to bring it up before our first meeting where we're planning on having her in. Do we have to vote on the mayor's appointments? No. I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make that perfectly clear. <laughs> and, and then the other thing, uh, just a quick update on safe routes to school. Um, we have received the planning grant. We have engaged a consultant. Uh, we've met with NDOT with the consultant and the consultant and the task force is meeting next Tuesday at noon right back there um, and that's going to I think dovetail really nicely with downtown revitalization uh, with our trails plans with the uh, uh, with the redevelopment commission plans um, access to schools um, sidewalks and you know pedestrian ways and things like that so do you know if 18th street is in that to conversation where's Casey um, I um, east of east of Main Street either, either side um, I'm sure it is we've seen that for a long time as one of our east east west connectors okay. uh, and you know there's no sidewalk on either side of 18th Street <coughs> on either side of Main Street on 18th Street to my recollection so I know 18th is I'm sure one of the big ones 12th um, a couple of the street, north south streets, Fulton, and different ones. So um, we've kind of pulled those, what we think is the best plan together, and then we're going to present that to the consultant and have them chew it over and, um, you know, confirm it and look at our existing inventory. And, and Fourth Street was another one. Mm -hmm. Fourth Street. Yeah, how many miles do we have in our plan? One of them was 1.2, oh. and the other one was 1.35, I think. thought it was more than that, but okay. Is that one I think so. Seems like a lot. So really that's all I had. Um, just to kind of update you that we'll be here with a public meeting at your next meeting, asking for a resolution for the downtown, additional downtown planning before we try to get things ready for an OCRA grant hopefully in 2015. That'll help with some housing things and some of our infrastructure like, you know, 712 and, you know, whoever comes to the, you know, to table to invest in their own buildings, we envision helping, you know, that investment along a little bit. So that makes sense. Any questions, thoughts? Got our meeting schedules down if you want to drop in. You can have the next one's December what? 12-2 uh, uh, for safe routes and then 12-12 for redevelopment commission. And at the 12-12 meeting will be will be some focus on like our, our number two project for redevelopment that you guys may want to be there for the executive meeting for that if you have the ability to do so. And the executive will be at 1130. I'll try to include you guys email on the agenda when we get it ready. If you just have the dates noted, confirm the times and stuff. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Jerry. Thanks, Terry. It looks like we've got a vibrant board now. And thanks for Terry to spearheading this on the redevelopment commission. So we, yeah. it's been my, about five years now, maybe four years. So we're, start, <laughs> we're starting to be a well-oiled machine. So that's good. <laughs> All right, let's move back up to, um, I guess we just need to go with the Area Plan Commission now. Uh, we didn't meet. No meeting. Nope, no new business. Okay, we'll move down to Brian Goodman, FedCo report. FedCo did not meet, um, had the annual meeting on the 20th that was unable to attend. Okay, do you want to give an update on the FedCo meeting since you're here, Terry? Way to go, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> I was um, there, but I don't want to give his report, so. 
Could you state your name for <laughs> Terry Lee, RTZ. Um, Channel 4. We did have our annual meeting. Um, I talked a lot about some of our uh, wins this year in terms of businesses that have expanded and how we want to put emphasis on uh, helping our lo local businesses grow to help support the growth of the tax base and also the employment base, um, including um, you know Rochester Iron and Wilson Fertilizer and um, Top Industries and maybe Top Industries again in the near future and um, talked a little bit about American Axle and, and those guys coming. We talked uh, about our small business plan competition awards. Uh, we had six judges from out of the county and we just took some Fedco money, 10 grand, and split into a existing business category and a new business category and we awarded $5,000 to uh, Giretti's for an expansion they want to do. $5,000 to a company called Custom Concrete Leveling. Um, so we're working with those guys. They have to come in for uh, consultations once a month for a year, you know, uh, in order to keep getting the money and stuff. So uh, we had a lot of, well, we had, I think, 10 companies, mostly lifestyle businesses uh, that had, you know, applied and uh, brought their business plans in and had to do an oral presentation of their business um, to our judges, uh, which was challenging for some of them. And uh, so that went over really well. We had uh, three or four of the businesses that didn't win, but were all good uh, representations come to the annual meeting and speak a little bit about their business and the process of the Fedco business planning program and how they liked it and how much they got out of it, even though they didn't win and stuff like that was good. And then Scott Hutchison from Purdue Center for Regional Development was there. He and I spent the day, um, or after from lunchtime on, meeting with four businesses in the community that are sort of stage two businesses that are, you know, successful and and steady uh, businesses um, that employ a good number of people in the community, but they're maybe at that plateau level or just looking for ways to increase market share or. Um, uh, customer base and so forth so we met for lunch and then um, Scott and I went out to those four businesses and visited and he's going to follow up to see if he can bring any resources to them that will basically help their bottom lines you know in the interest of more local company expansions and things so that was good and then Scott spoke um, at our meeting about uh, you know business development and you know those kind of things from the Purdue Regional Center for Development side of things and they look like a good partner for us they're, they're I don't want to say dabbling, but they're involved in economic development and community development. So it's just another partner that we have to work with that can bring some things to the table. And uh, he was glad to have lunch with these four businesses, go visit their places. Um, we went to First Federal for the open house. I took him there. I figured being a Purdue guy, Dick would like that. So they hit it off pretty good. And then he spoke at our meeting and then he ended up at Schnabel tier with a half dozen or a dozen of us from the Fedco meeting afterwards. And uh, he enjoyed the farm winery and cheese and stuff over there too. So it's a pretty good day. That's about it, I guess. Yeah. Any questions? Hey, okay. thank I you. Yeah, <laughs> 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 thank you, Terry. Any questions? No, especially, you always show up here. So. <laughs> yeah. Burns, do you have anything on the park board? Yeah, the park board met. Uh, didn't need very long. Uh, they want to know, <clears throat> have the city council tell them uh, who is responsible uh, for taking down trees. Uh, otherwise, who's going to pay for it? And where? The park? Yeah. And uh, they really don't know. Uh, whether it's the tree board or the park board and uh, who gets a contract. Uh, because uh, uh, they had somebody look at a tree, uh, I guess it was a pro tree down here and uh, he was way out of line uh, thousands of dollars taking down a tree and uh, there's other people uh, right here in town to take a tree down for a lot less uh, yeah that's interesting did we talk about that with you andy perkins for uh yeah the uh, uh tree board representative uh, ray ray dossman, dossman uh, was in to talk kind of from the tree board's perspective and, and talk a little bit about what their duties were and, and uh, I agreed to, to kind of put together kind of a handbook for, for the tree
three board members. I guess it, uh, uh, my thought in putting that together is to kind of delineate for them what the statute seems to say is, is tree board business and, and by extension, um, uh, I, I would say uh, uh, anything, it, it comes down to uh, what's in the tree lawn or what we call street trees is the, the ordinances language versus park trees. And uh, I don't believe the tree board uh, uh, is intended to have jurisdiction to affect uh, uh, trees in a park. Now, I, I suppose there are going to be a few park trees that are in the tree lawn, <laughs> and, and there you have an issue. But by and large, a general tree sitting within a park that's not in a street tree, I, I don't think has anything to do with the tree board by ordinance. Now, maybe there's been some of that in the past, but uh, I guess that's kind of when you look at the ordinance as a whole, it seems to say street trees, tree board, park trees, park. Well, uh, <clears throat> Purdue came in several years back and uh, the park board uh, paid for a survey of all the trees in the city park mm -hmm. right. and they marked those trees and some of these uh, trees that need to be taken down and all of this. Now this was the park board. They paid for all of this. This is what is confusing with the park board. Then tell the park board to keep their nose out of the parks. I have to tell the tree the board, tree, tree, board, tree, board, tree, board, tree board, tree board to keep their nose out of the parks. Uh, if that's the way it's going to be, but they're going to have to know this. Yeah. Uh, and I think it's a very confusing to these people. Right. And I think so, Andy Perkins just explained yeah. it well. So. Well, I think that's, that's where not, we need to go now, just to explain it to both if, uh, the tree board because if the, tree, the, if the park department wants to take down a tree uh, which is hanging over Manitou Mountain, uh, and uh, this is one of their concerns. Uh, there's a couple of trees right there by that new, uh, well, where they put the new cement in and so on, in that uh, pavilion there uh, by the uh, Manitou Mountain. They uh, got a tree there, it's pretty rotten, and they want to take some of those trees down around there. And uh, so, next thing is, uh, does the city have a contract with uh, somebody that's taking trees down? Just, like no tree. Just we, in the tree lawn. We just do in the right away, that's all. That's all. Yeah. So they can go ahead and right. get ugly tree if they want or ugly truck if they want. Same thing the golf course yeah. does is Lyle contracts okay. independent contractors well, too. Uh, Lyle was there and he didn't know about the golf course either. So. Well, I know, but that's yeah. We've taken yeah. trees down there so, recently. Yeah, but it's yeah. always been separate. The park board's always paid for, not yeah. the tree board. Right. So I don't see where the confusion would be. I think it's just learning. Uh, new people pay for, pay for those trees yeah. in, the, in the golf course. Right. We have new members but, on the uh, tree board since we see this has brought up a little conflict between who does what. Right. Okay. So we, we got that straightened out. out. I Thanks think so. Andy and and uh, we'll be uh, yeah. totally. sure that they know all about that. Uh, the pool is closed for duration. Be open Memorial Day. Uh, the golf course. Uh, had uh, $294,444 uh, compared to last year, $281,866. Uh, uh, they were down quite a bit and its uh, season passes were down, green fees were down. Uh, total revenue was down 11.5% on the golf course. But uh, when you look at this, uh, it really is not that bad because uh, if you take a look around, uh, two golf courses were just purchased uh, this last uh, week. Uh, one in South Bend, and I forget where the other one was at. Uh, several million uh, privately purchased by a consortium. And uh, so we're not in bad shape when we're down compared to these others. They're, they're actually having folded up. They can't uh, maintain them. Season passes and uh, green fees, uh, uh, and uh, also you can buy individual golf lessons uh, for uh, for about half price right now, according to the golf pro. And that's about the extent of it. Uh, Are those indoor golf lessons or outdoor? <laughs> well, uh, I don't know. If you want to go out and swing your club right now? I guess he'll he'll, get, he'll go <laughs> with you. Uh, Shada has received a check uh, from uh, Indiana Metal. Our Rochester Metal Products, 
uh, for Ron Meyer short game area, which has been completed. Uh, they're down to uh, three maintenance staff members uh, for the winter. And they've cut uh, all those fellas down and, and uh, they've maintained three of them. They're gonna do uh, some work on the machinery and, and uh, some of the other uh, work around the course. So that's about it. Did Jim, Jim Mooney retire all the way? Yeah. <clears throat> Any questions, John? Thank you, Burns. Okay. okay. Oh, there's, by the way, there's no meeting in December. Okay. In the park I don't think there's any meeting in the tree board in December either. Oh. So well, I'll figure know. this all out in the first of the year. Uh, okay. Hmm. Okay. Anybody else have any questions? Okay. Terry Lee's already uh, gave his report. Uh, Mark Smith. Uh, last month's BZA meeting was. It lasted about uh, five minutes. They had one uh, application for a variance on a garage. Tomorrow night's meeting is going to be a little bit interesting because uh, one of them is uh, about a a new ice cream shop wants to build a little building and uh, erect a, a sign. Another one is uh, an open pavilion in a in a backyard of pretty good size. Another one for um, a hair salon in a house, and another one in a uh, for a church on 321 East 8th Street. So uh, probably be a little bit of a more lengthy meeting for BZA tomorrow, but. On the Council on Aging, a few things to report. Uh, they are expecting to get a new van next summer, which uh, will be good. A lot of area uh, commissions are not getting vehicles because they aren't, uh, they don't have the demand that we have in Fulton County and uh, so they're pretty excited about that if you haven't been in the building the kitchen area is has been repainted and appliances are coming in the month of December for the new kitchen uh, bad news and maybe some of your other agencies have known this but officially have been told by United Way that they will not be receiving their third and fourth quarter uh, appropriations because they, United Way is out of money deciding to not use 2015 pledges to pay 2014 obligations. So uh, Council on Aging has a $10,000 they, they were awarded $10,000 at the beginning of the year, so they're not going to receive half of that. So $5,000 a shortfall in revenue. They had their first annual spaghetti dinner and bake sale, uh, very successful, made $957. Uh, if you want to make note, they're having a Christmas dinner on, uh, which is lunch at 12 on 12 19 at 11 30 and uh, the notables are going to be there to sing at about 10 30 you're certainly all invited to that uh, we did approve the 2015 budget and um, the director, Lori Pollock, would love to come to uh, one of our council meetings and just do a report on activities and what they do, if, if that's okay with the council. Yeah. Just to uh, have her come front mm. part of next year, <clears throat> January or February or sometime. Um, they they had 4,108 trips that Transpo took in October. 
How many? 4,108. 4,108. Is that a record? <laughs> it's close. I don't. I don't think it is, but it. It's just amazing, and unfortunately, even with those numbers, uh, we we did have a letter from a a disgruntled uh, family that can't get a ride for their daughter at the times they want to get her to work, and there just aren't enough vehicles and en and enough drivers at the particular time. We're trying to work it out with maybe see if she could work different hours or talk to the family and uh, all those things. But uh, with those no, it's just staggering what they do there. So hmm. any questions? That's it. Nope. Thanks, Martin. <clears throat> okay, we'll have to have uh, Tom Butler give his report next uh, meeting. John, do you have anything on the uh, water board? Uh, this chase Skip chase. Oh, I, don't know. Skip I, don't know. I don't have anything to say. I, I can bounce back up there. I had my notes written all over. Chase, let's go back to Chase. Do you have anything on the solid waste and uh, um, adoption? Yeah. Um, the one thing that we did were we looked at the uh, bids for each town in the city, and that was what he had handed you and a few others, the bid. Um, we approved those. For each town in the city, we approved. So the, how, did, how did the bids go at MS that meeting on the, the, the town of Fulton? Did they take the bids that's on those? Tonight. That's tonight. Actually, oh, yeah. Akron's the only one that's known so far. Akron, did yeah. they, did they accept the bids? No, they did not. Oh, okay, okay. Because it was the same bid that we received. All right. So. Um, we approved new insurance um, for the employees for 2015 and also approved their HSA accounts from $1,500 a year to $3,000 a year because of the deductible going up to $3,000. I'm sorry, we went to $2,500 a year instead of $1,500 a year. Deductible? Yeah. Um, approved the holidays for 2015 and also approved the salary ordinance for 2015. all the notes I have on that and then for the animal shelter the main thing really was talking about the new building and we have kind of a, a drawing and stuff of, from our architect and how our plans are for the new building if I'll just pass those around and let you guys look at them and our proposed budget for 2015 uh, year to date for 2014 and our budget for 2014 I'll just pass that around too for you guys to look at it if you'd like and that's really all we have there Shada do we have a current account on how much we did spend on the animal shelter out of our budget they spent all the roughly I want to say it's about $200 they have left. So they've spent they most of our 50000 and we yeah. allotted. 46, 47. 47 out of 53, too. About six. Did, did not spend six, right? Three. Uh, yeah, but they did. They spent quite a bit more this year than they have in the past. Okay. Anything else? Yes, sir. Thank you, Chase. Any other questions? Then uh, I guess we'll just move on to unfinished business. Or, John, do you want to give us a report on uh, the yeah, water? I missed the uh, <laughs> last water board meeting, so. Uh, Is Taylor still here? Maybe he did that report. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's bring him in. I had the minutes of that, but uh, it was a short meeting. 
if I recall, I think it was just kind of the same thing that they normally approved the shutoff list. Um, I don't know that they had any discussion items really at the last meeting. I don't know. They had a presentation. Steve um, Carter was Steve here Carter talking was about here. new uh, financing, mm -hmm. but uh, other than that, it was a pretty short meeting. So we did talk about the uh, deans, which we already talked about there. So, <coughs> but uh, we're waiting on HWC to get the report on that. But. Uh, we do have the pressure all around the city. So other than that, it was pretty short meeting. Um, I believe Mark's, Mark, excuse me, um, David, board member, Marvin. Marvin, Marvin Davis. Davis will be appointed again next year. Yeah. So mm -hmm. that's uh, coming up for his appointment. So <clears throat> other than that, that was it. So we have unfinished business on 712 Main Street update. That's about one we already talked about. That's that's that. New business. Okay, we have a legal department, the parking ordinance update. We did that, right? Yeah. yeah. And aggressive dog ordinance update. Does anybody have anything on that still? Or? We don't. I just saw in the paper. In the paper tonight. Yeah, there was a girl that got bit by a pit bull. Here in Rochester? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Same one. Same yeah. dog? Pardon me? Seems to be. Same dog? It's, a, it's in the same neighborhood. More than that. Jefferson and 8th. Yep. 8th. Mm -hmm. Jefferson and 8th. Yep. I remember, I just caught it before I left the house. Jefferson. Right? Not a, Andy, do you know how badly she was hurt or no? No. I actually do because I wrote it. Um, it said the bite didn't break the skin. Mm. Um, so I don't know. But she's still under reported. She was worried about the dog having shots. Mm -hmm. okay. we I had the whole ordinance from Purdue. I mean, I gave it to Shada. Did you get it? Well, I mean, did, did it have anything? I mean, we can look at that, but we talked about it about other cities, but I guess it's really what we want to do. I mean, you know, it's, everybody's has their own mm -hmm. custom version of dogs, you know, so yeah. I guess it comes down to Andy Perkins as far as how we'd want to word our ordinance, you know, put some no, more teeth into it, no pun intended. Mm -hmm. you know. We need to. Do so. I mean, we can't have dogs like that running around. It's no. It's not safe. No. Well, it's just a matter of time. I mean, it's uh, you know we don't want we're we're talking about it. We just need to we need to figure out what we want to. I don't think the breed matters. Be, you know, no, I think it's just a dog. Well, no, you know, we definitely I mean, don't want to be breed specific. No, no it's just behavior patterns. Animals. Right. Little dogs tend to be a little grumpier. Little dogs will bite you on the ankle faster than anything. Right? <laughs> we can decide what what we want to do for just dogs that are unleashed. And running around, and then also what to do with dogs that show aggressive behavior. I think, yeah, there's a couple different issues I've heard people talk about. And I think there's another issue with cleaning up after your dog. Oh, you know, that needs to be put in this ordinance, too. We have stiff penalties somewhere, you know, while we're looking at the whole thing. I believe we have, I know we've got that. That is actually in the ordinance. I just don't know what the penalty is. Right. We need to be more aggressive on any penalties for people cleaning up after the dog. Tough on the proof. You gotta catch them in the ass. DNA tests. Well, you know, well, you if, the if they don't, if they don't carry a bag, there's probably a good sign that they don't pick it up. Right? Yeah. But anyway, we can work on that. So yeah. keep moving forward on that. You're working on that with Andy. Yeah, I'll call Andy. That's my fault. Okay, let's move on to ADA concerns. Um, it's too too cold to pour any concrete, but. I did talk to uh, Hugh Richards. Is supposed to uh, he had a contract on the bid. He's supposed to get with me, <clears> and uh, at least we can probably appropriate a couple bids for next year. The money's short. We'll so. have to see because I'm, we're going to have some transfers with the uh, MBH fund because of short because of overage for repairs and maintenance and stuff. So we right. have to balance that <clears> to see if we have enough to do an uh, income raise. Okay. So let's move on, to, unless there's any other concerns from anybody, but if not, we'll move on for ordinance number 
2014 for the salary ordinance and that's pretty much another ordinance that we just need to lock in we've all discussed it pretty much and now it's in front of us um, I don't it does include the 50 cent raise that you guys discussed and approved <laughs> Has the state got back with us on anything yet mm -hmm. on our budget? I haven't received the 1782 notice yet. It'll so that could be, even though we approve this, it could come back that it could be amended. we might have to amend it by the state's request. But it's what we've all agreed about to give the employees a 50 cent raise straight across the board and department heads an additional $250. I will entertain a motion to read ordinance number 9 2014 by title only. So moved. So <laughs> cool. That was quick. Let's see if we get any support on that motion. I saw you guys want to be here. I'm going kind of slow right now. I'll second it. I'm sorry, who made the motion? Brian. Brian. Okay, all in favor to read it by title only, 6-0. Yeah. <laughs> ordinance number 9-2014, an ordinance fixing the salaries for the employees of the City of Rochester, Indiana for the year 2015. Okay. Okay. Uh, Do we want to uh, read this one time for the uh, Channel 4? We might run out of tape. No. <laughs> I, uh, I think I'll make the motion we read it in title only. Second. All in favor? Okay. Ordinance number 9 2014, ordinance fixing the salaries for the employees of the city of Rochester, Indiana for the year 2015. Okay, I'll entertain a motion to read it twice by its entire read. Time. To suspend the rules and read title only. I'll make that motion. Okay. I'll second it. All in favor? Okay. Ordinance number 9 2014, ordinance fixing the salaries for the employees of the city of Rochester, Indiana for the year 2015. Any uh, discussion? If not, I'll entertain a motion to pass ordinance number 9-2014 for the salaries of employees for the City of Rochester. Make a motion for the adoption of ordinance 9-2014. Second. Second. Okay, all in favor? Okay, motion pa or ordinance passes. Let's uh, go down to the ordinance 10-2014 uh, for the 2015 electric elected salary of officials. Make a motion Senate. for the uh, first reading of ordinance 10 2014. Second that. All in favor? By title only. That's right, this one's short. Ordinance number 10 2014, an ordinance fixing the salaries of all elected officials of the city of Rochester, Indiana, payable for 2015 as approved by Indiana Code 36 4 7 2. Okay, I'll entertain a motion to read ordinance number 10-2014 for payable in 2015 for elected officials. Make a motion for the second reading of uh, ordinance 10-2014 by title only. I'll second it. All in favor? Ordinance 10-2014, an ordinance fixing the salaries of all elected officials of the City of Rochester, Indiana, payable for 2015 as approved by Indiana Code 36-4-7-2. Okay, I will entertain a motion to read the third reading of Ordinance 11, no, 10-2014 for elected official salary in 2015. Make a motion we suspend the rules and have the third reading of ordinance 10 2014 by title only. Second. All in favor? Okay. Ordinance 10 2014, an ordinance fixing the salaries of all elected officials of the city of Rochester, Indiana, payable for 2015, as approved by Indiana Code 36 4 7 2. Okay, thank you, Brian. Now I'll uh, entertain a motion for the passage of ordinance 10-2014 for 2015 elected officials salary. Is 
So moved. Second. All in favor? Okay. Ordinance passes. We have an ordinance 11 2014 for codification adoption. This is for uh, basically it's what American Legal Publishing does for our ordinance is just to update it. Yeah. I, I, I think and this is a formality to take out what the old supplement and replace it with the new supplement. Which Andy, did you look at that too, or is this just yeah, there? Yeah, they send one of those every twelve months yeah. or every twenty-four. Yeah. Every time we, we do it. Every time we update our ordinance books. Mm -hmm. So I will entertain a motion to um, pass ordinance number or read number 11 2014 for enacting and adopting the supplements to the code of ordinances for the city of Rochester and declarations of emergencies. That's what I'll take a motion to. So moved. Second. The title only. Second. All in favor? Second First that, reading. Okay. Ordinance number 11-2014, an ordinance enacting and adopting a supplement to the Code of Ordinances for the City of Rochester and declaring an emergency. Okay, I will entertain a motion to read ordinance number 11-2014, the second reading. So moved by title only. I'll second. All in favor to read it by title only. Six zero. Ordinance number 11-2014, an ordinance enacting and adopting a supplement to the Code of Ordinances for the City of Rochester and declaring an emergency. Okay, I will uh, entertain a motion to read ordinance number 11-2014, third reading. Make a motion we uh, suspend the rules and have the third reading of ordinance 11-2014 by title only. Second that. All in favor? Okay. Ordinance number 11-2014, an ordinance enacting and adopting a supplement to the Code of Ordinances for the City of Rochester and declaring an emergency. Thank you, Brian. I will entertain a motion to pass ordinance number 11-2014. So moved. Second. All in favor to pass ordinance number 11-2014. <clears throat> ordinance passes. Okay, so then... Uh, Moving down resolutions, we'll do the resolutions. Everybody voted. Okay. Well, I, did, I, did, I looked up. I just didn't see John. That's why I was double checking. Okay. For it passed. Um, that resolution. That was the one Terry was talking about. And we don't. We don't have one. And you're going to do that at next meeting. He's We're going to do it at the public the hearing. Public. So that'll be on our next. Twenty uh, third. Yes. The next meeting will be the twenty third. Is that right? Yep. Santa Claus is going to be here too. And I haven't no. set the date for the Christmas party. Um, I am having a mayor's, um, um, I have to get with everybody, uh, December 11th. I'm having a Northern Indiana mayor's deal on there. I'll invite the council and my department heads and shot is to um, get with you to, if you want to come also for my mayor's meeting. I'm having department head, I'm having a mayor's Indiana Northern round table meeting here December 11th at the Elks and um, Johnny and Sally um, are going to perform and mm -hmm. since I'm the president of the Northern Indiana Mayor's round table I host the party so yeah. I'll get you the information here and if you make it you're all welcome it won't it'll be as my guest as the city um, yeah. I have a question since uh, the curbside recycling is going to end should we be should we put a couple of notices in like town talk and just so people know otherwise it's going to be in your yard <laughs> yeah it's a good idea i mean yeah i don't think we can do anything by the first of the year like andy perkins says we just you know. talk about letting them know yeah. right yeah, just, right. Yeah, just let them know that the contract ends yeah there won't be any curbside pickup after when? January 1st. Uh, yeah. Last week of December. December. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think we should. Yes. Be some people. And then uh, just a thought. And no. okay. While we're talking about 
uh, animal ordinances. Um, is there a reason why we don't require horses to be bagged that are coming through town? You know, I, I just talked about that at the last mayor's meeting that Walker, Walkerusa, I think they require that. They should. And yeah, a lot more traffic than we do. I think it should be. <coughs> Myself, I mean. Well, I don't know why it, it should, I mean, people are supposed to pick up dog doo-doo mm -hmm. uh, and horses are, well, it's nasty. Mm -hmm. So, you want to think about having an ordinance for bagging horses in town? I think it should be. I mean, it's a good call. unless you're riding it with no buggy, you know, I mean, it's kind of hard to, if you ever ride a horse through town by a saddle, it's kind of hard to take care of that. But, uh, Pull away. I, that would, you know, I mean, that's, uh, but yes, I agree. And we Mark, thing with this, or is what, this what, yeah, what, what do you want to do with oh, this? That was just for the Jefferson, so cycle track. So whenever they bring oh. it back, okay, hold on to it. Hold on to it. Is that your picture? Frame. You can have that one. So you aren't Shout stalking these two ladies. So are you? You are stalking these two ladies. Yeah, that's what it looks like to me. Yeah. 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 Is there anything else? What do you want? The ordinance on dogs for? <clears throat> I know I didn't catch all that. What are you wanting for? Vicious dogs. Where we're going to go with penalties? Okay, we have an ordinance mm -hmm. already in place for uh, dangerous animals. And evidently, it's not working though. Yeah, What's that because the same dogs out doing the same. Thing. Multiple offenses, and the same yeah. dog is what, what brought us to this. Okay, because it specifies in their evidence that the animal has, without provocation, bitten or attacked a person or animal three times in a twelve month period. Well, you know what? I don't like that at all. Times. I don't want to be bit three times before no, I, I say, hey, yeah. I, before I say, hey, you know what? That dog might be dangerous. <laughs> yeah, that, you know I mean, <laughs> especially if it's out loose. Yeah. I mean, well, but if this <laughs> most recent one is I don't like that verbiage at all. Well, yeah. it, it was from '91, so there were more times. Yeah. Shame on me. Ninety-one. The place to get those ordinance of ninety-one point seven. Doug asked me to get those back from you guys. There should be three of them up there. What is it? The contract. That contract for Doug Oaks that he left. They were his copies, and he asked me to. Not this. No, 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 no. Oh yeah, these these are legal. Okay. Well, this one. That one. Okay. 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 Well, those are I guess at this point, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn the meeting. There we are. I'll we have a second. Second. That's it. All in favor to adjourn? Yes. Yes. Okay, I thank you for being here. Channel 4, thank you.